Hi there, this is Ranjit and in this uh, video, we'll have a look at this POCO X5 uh, Pro. Now, I've used this device for the last couple of days. No, it's in depth review, but I think so. I have used this device enough so that I can give you my opinion. What do I feel about this POCO X5 Pro? And I would say this POCO X5 Pro is very similar to the Redmi Note uh, 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 12 Pro. Uh, again, uh, that comes with the MediaTek Dimensity 1080, but this comes with the Snapdragon 778. SOC. I'll talk about the pricing also because we know the pricing now. Uh, but first, let me give you an idea about the device. Okay, it comes in this box. Uh, let me quickly show you what do we get in the box. So some stuff over here, paperwork and all those things. Uh, you also uh, actually get a case in this one. So that's actually nice. Uh, the sta that standard TPU case uh, uh, like this. I didn't use it with the case. So it's just like this. But again, that uh, flexible TPU. At least you're getting that. So I appreciate that. And the uh, big thing is that you still get a charger in the box, which is actually a 67 watt charger and a charging cable. So that way I would say, currently you're getting a lot in the box because these days many vendors skip the charger. So uh, that's what it is. I'll keep the box to the side. And this is the device itself. Uh, of course, I've already set it up. Let me give you a physical overview, then we'll move towards what do I feel about this device. Uh, I like the fact that this is retailing the 3.5mm headphone jack. In fact, the audio output is actually good. If you have a good pair of wired uh, headphones or earphones, you will appreciate it. Also, I like the fact that this vent is actually for the speaker. It has actually stereo speakers with Dolby Atmos. We also uh, get a secondary noise cancellation mode, and this is the IR blaster. So again, it's, as it's a typical Xiaomi phone, we are having the IR blaster. I didn't use it, but again, if you are a person who appreciates that, yes, it's there. One thing to note is that the entire build is actually plastic, guys. Uh, this is not glass like the Redmi Note 12 Pro, which I have actually had a glass back. This is not a glass back. So this is completely plastic. And at least in this color, it resists a little bit. But again, at certain angles, uh, this one, uh, this this area, you will notice that, uh, what do you say, fingerprints and all those things. So entire chases is plastic. And the phone feels very, very light to hold, which is a good thing also. But again, it feels a lot lighter for this size of the phone. That, that's the first impression I got. Bottom again, we have one more speaker and again, the spe uh, stereo speakers are good. Uh, it also has Dolby Atmos and I would say uh, this is sufficiently loud and the separation was good. Uh, we do have a USB Type-C port again, 67 watt charging and it charges roughly in about 46% from about 1% it finished that. So that's pretty fast, I would say. Uh, SIM tray, but no micro SD card in this one. And I did uh, testing with the, my Geo SIM and I was able to actually get 5G signal on this one. So it uh, supports not only the NSA network, but even the SA and it has most of the 5G band. So again, as of now, Airtel 5G will also work and Geo will also work. But one band, it has N78, not a problem, but N77 is missing. As of now, it's not a problem at all because no provider is using it. But in future, maybe there is a chance some provider might use the N77 band. So that's small networking, but as of now, still Geo 5G also works on this one and Airtel 5G also works. I tested this with Geo 5G. And on this end, again, very, very clean, nothing. Moving towards the back, we have the uh, triple camera setup. The main camera is that 108 megapixel uh, Samsung's ISO cell, uh, but again, no optical image stabilization. Here I felt uh, it goes slightly behind the Redmi Note 12 Pro because that had actually OIS. Then we have an eight megapixel ultra wide and then the lovely two megapixel macro. Uh, yeah, still we are stuck with that two megapixel stuff. Uh, front facing is that punch hole 16 megapixel. Uh, I'll show you samples later on. Now moving to the screen, this is something that I liked on this uh, smartphone and this is very similar to the Redmi Note 12 Pro. The quality of the screen is good. It's actually having that 6.67 uh, inch uh, screen. It's a POLED uh, screen and it gets sufficiently bright in outdoor conditions so you don't have to uh, worry. Again, good thing is that it is having that 120 hertz uh, uh, refresh rate. But the good thing is that this is also having adaptive refresh so it can automatically move between 30 60 90 and 120 so that's actually a good thing so the screen quality again i do not have a problem and one more thing surprising was that this is actually hdr screen and it's actually dolby vision certified so that way the screen quality that they have put on this one is good the fingerprint scanner is here uh, it's this one in the power on off button and works well again i didn't have a problem with this one but again it's this is typically running what do you say let's talk about the software now i was excited seeing that it comes out of the box with me ui uh, 14 if i show you 
if I go to about the device, as you can see, MIUI 14. Let me reduce the brightness a little bit. But again, if you notice, uh, this is actually still running on Android 12. And this is my first con with this device. Now it's 2023 and Android 14 beta is actually running out right now. Uh, developer previews and all this thing. But this is still stuck at Android 12. And Poco is promising next to Android upgrade. So it will get Android 13 and just Android 14. So that I feel is a con on this one. This should have actually come with Android 13 like many of the other smartphones in this price range. So that's a con. Uh, but security updates, three years you'll get. So that's what it is. In terms of Android upgrades, you will only get up to Android 14 on uh, this smartphone. Uh, coming to the variants, uh, you get in two variants. Base is six gigabytes of RAM. That comes with 128 gigabytes of storage. Storage is UFS 2.2. It's okay. Uh, uh, yes, UFS 3.1 would have been okay, but considering the price point, I'm okay with that. And you also get an eight gigabyte uh, RAM variant the, that comes with 256 gigabytes of storage. So that's what regarding the software. And this typical uh, MIUI, uh, I would say MIUI 14 is fluid. I didn't uh, notice any jitters or anything on this one. So that way I would say they have optimized it well. But again, there are a bunch of bloatware uh, even on this smartphone. Uh, luckily, not very intrusive, but stuff like Moj and all those things are still there on this one. Snapchat, again, I didn't install Zillow. So there is a bit of bloatware that is there on this smartphone. Uh, fortunately, for example, Moj, you can uninstall most of the bloatware. But just remember, bloatware is there on this smartphone. Okay. Uh, we also get GetSAP. Again, it's MIUI. So the, and there are some, I didn't remove these notifications, as you can see. Again, it keeps sending you notifications like this again and again. This is my uh, whatever. But again, do you do get a quite a bit of notifications like that the keyboard the music app wallpaper carousel zillow so yes you can remove it but again just remember out of the box you will get all this uh, it's not a deal breaker but again i have to mention that that is what you are getting with this one okay uh, another thing now this is a slight con uh, this is regarding the history of Poco earlier what happened with some of their earlier smartphones with updates uh, yes they are offering the good thing is that they are offering two years of warranty on this one so that's actually a good thing because many of the vendors actually offer just one year of warranty but again uh, if you're getting this smartphone be careful with the updates because uh, earlier we have seen many of the Poco phones after updates they actually started having problems uh, Poco team has said that they have acknowledged that and they'll take care of it in the future but still I'm keeping my fingers crossed so if you're getting the smartphone if you're buying the smartphone again for the price uh, what you're getting it's a good one but if you are planning to get this phone and you are a person who likes to keep your smartphones more than two years then I would say apart from the regular two-year warranty what you are getting also offer some extra warranty by paying for a third party just to be on the safe side guys that's my frank opinion about it considering what we have seen with some of the poker phones earlier the front glass is actually gorilla glass 5 so that's actually a nice thing but again back is plastic guys so again use it with a case i have to say Again, uh, because of the Snapdragon 778, the general performance on the phone is very, very good. Again, that 778 still, yes, we have seen uh, a lot of smartphones in 2022 with Snapdragon 778, for example, the Nothing Phone, uh, the Moto H30, and all of them perform very well. That's the same case even with this one. And again, as I've told you, with the MIUI 14, though it's not Android 13, it's uh, still, I didn't notice that juddiness or anything on this phone. And the RAM management was also okay. So that way in day-to-day -day performance, uh, I did not have a problem. Again, as I've told you, I also ran uh, uh, the Geo uh, SIM I had put on this one and I was getting 5G. If I go to the result, as you can see, uh, the 5G test I did. And in fact, uh, the 5G speeds that I got uh, were very good. This first one is actually uh, from the Geo 5G, first and second one, uh, all these tests. And again, I could get a max of 918 megabytes. So that way, uh, it's uh, not only supporting the NSA that Airtel is uh, using, but even the standalone network that actually Geo is using. So that way, as of now, with the uh, Geo and Airtel, you will get 5G. So that's nice. But again, N77 is missing. That's again a future thing we don't know there might be some operator in India that might use it so it's slight question mark but as of now uh, 5G will work on this no issues move around a little bit and I'll increase the volume and I'll block this it's coming from this side and I block this 
<laughs> so I would say uh, the stereo output was surprising to me. It is a lot better than what I thought. But the only thing is that as this is having that plastic back uh, above about 90% volume, the back will vibrate a little bit. That is something that I noticed. But apart from that, the stereo output is good. And as I've told you, you still have the 3.5mm headphone jack. So that way it was good. Uh, so as expected, uh, even in terms of battery life, uh, uh, I hate Xiaomi's new uh, UI and all these things. They don't give you the exact SOT values, but the battery life like a typical Snapdragon 778 was actually very, very good on this one. So again, in terms of battery life, you don't have to worry. Even if you are a sort of a heavy user, it will last for a typical full day. And again, with the 67 watt charger, it charges quickly. So the battery life is not an issue on this smartphone. Okay, first for some outdoor shots and outdoor generally does a good job. Even this shot came out good the hdr is good but again in terms of shadow detail if you notice where i pointed with the arrows the shadows are crushed quite a bit if you noticed and this is the regular shot and this is the ultra wide so there is slight color difference between the regular shot again as you can see this is the uh, regular shot and this was that ultra wide uh, now human uh, subjects actually the skin tones are produced decently i would say and this was in the portrait uh, bokeh mode in this photo i was against the light and i did not like the contrast and night mode the pictures are relatively soft and just forget about the ultra white again you got to be careful at night because it does not have any ois fortunately the front facing camera performed a lot better i would say compared to what i expected and these were taken in the portrait bokeh mode with the front facing camera uh, so guys recording the video with the rear facing camera of this poco x5 pro and this is in 4k 30 fps at 4k maximum is 30 fps not 60 and uh, just recording this to give you an idea how it uh, does with skin tones and all those things uh, we'll also walk around here uh, to see how is the stability because this one does not have optical image stabilization again recording in 4k and i'm just walking in this recording, notice the pulsating that it is pulsating quite a bit, which was very, very surprising. I did not catch this in the preview, but uh, when I'm looking at uh, this one uh, in the monitor, you notice that focus pulsing that is happening in uh, 4K, which was very distracting. Recording this sample video with the front facing camera of this Poco X5 uh, Pro. And uh, as you can see, uh, the maximum resolution guys uh, that it can record is uh, 1080p no 4k but this is how it is so guys this is the poco x5 uh, pro what do you feel about this ah again one more thing i completely forgot uh, again regarding gaming also the gpu is actually pretty decent on this uh, um, snapdragon 778 so i just played call of duty and i could play it at the high and even the max setting and it played fine so that way i would say in terms of gaming also it's a good experience and the handset did not heat up that much so again, you can also do quite a bit of gaming at high settings with uh, some of the heavier games. So that way, I like the performance. And overall, I would say it's a good smartphone. The Snapdragon 778 processor, we know, it's a very, very stable processor. So you're getting that. So overall, I would say the smartphone gets a lot of things right. If you're looking for a mid-range, I would say slightly premium mid-range smartphone with a good quality screen and um, good speakers. That way, it gets the check marks. Uh, now, coming to some of the shortcomings, again, as I've told you, uh, the reliability of some of the Poco devices based on the prior OT updates. So that gives a slight question mark to me. And I also do not like the fact that this comes out of the box with just Android 12 and just two year, next two years of Android upgrade. So that I, I, I feel Poco should just come out with a uh, statement that we will give next three years of Android upgrades for this smartphone. If they do that, then it'll be a great thing because they are offering three years of security update for this one. And coming down to the pricing here, I feel uh, again, that's the only uh, thing because of that you might go for this one uh, because the camera, yes, outdoor, it does good. But again, if I compare the camera with the Redmi Note 12 Pro 5G because it has OS and a better uh, Sony sensor, in camera i would rate that one to be slightly better uh, now when it comes down to the pricing i feel the pricing is good for what it is because guys let's be very frank the pricing of smartphones has changed quite a bit from 2022 to 2023 the pricing has increased uh, with a lot of brands uh, this 
again, the base variant that comes with six gigabytes of RAM, you can get for 23,000. I don't like the price with 23,000, but as of now, if you're using a ICIC credit card or some other credit card, you can get 2,000 rupees off. And that brings down the price to about 21,000 or something like that. And for that price, uh, I would say you're getting good hardware. The Snapdragon 778 chipset is actually very good. The screen quality is good on this one. Great for watching videos and stuff. It supports HDR and also Dolby Vision. And also the stereo speakers are good. And the battery life because of the Snapdragon 778 is good. So that way, I would say it gets a lot of check marks apart from some of the cons that I have mentioned. Uh, the nearest competitors of this one, I would say, yes, again, it is sort of having that MIUI. So you have that bloatware and you have to deal with MIUI. You know that if you're going for the show, Xiaomi or Poco phone, that's the uh, story. Uh, the, some of the other alternatives that are there in this one, uh, if you want the clean Android experience, is the Moto H30. I don't recall the exact pricing. I'll add it over here. And even the Nothing phone. I think the Nothing phone is about 26 or 27,000. Those also come with the Snapdragon 778. But if you're on a very, very tight budget, uh, for that 21,000 uh, price point, I feel this is a strong competitor, apart from some of the cons that I have mentioned. And if you plan to keep it a little bit more, again, uh, think about the additional uh, premium that you might have to pay for that extended uh, warranty that you have, might have to purchase from a third party. So that was my thoughts about the Poco X5 Pro. What do you feel about the same? Do let me know in the comment section below. Anyways, guys, this is Ranjit, and I hope to see you in my next video. Take care, guys.